This is my e-ink writing workflow, or well, this is an RLCD monitor, this is the Sun Vision display. So really it's my reflective screen, my eye comfort writing workflow. My content has improved massively over the last year, and I hope you agree. And my writing has been central to that. The biggest driver of that improvement has been an improvement in my writing. This year I've voraciously consumed books, audiobooks, and podcasts about writing good copy, writing good content, and storytelling. And these great e-ink tablets that I've used have greatly improved that experience. The reading and learning on them is absolutely fantastic, but so is writing. I've gone from just turning the camera on and riffing off an outline to carefully sculpting every word that I say. I sometimes do sort of riff off that anyway. <laughs> Except for live streams and react type videos like unboxings, everything that I've said is written down in a script and is usually on a teleprompter in front of the camera. Although one great thing about video is there's always room for an idea that comes to mind as you're filming or as you're editing. Have you seen the improvement in the content? Let me know in the comments. One thing I'm ready Asked to share more of is my workflows that I actually use on the e ink tablets. Although e ink tablets are an integral part of my workflow, I have to say that I do rely on many devices to create the written content that I do. And I'll talk you through how I use my phone, my laptop, and my desktop PC, as well as my e ink tablets in this video. The best part of the workflow for me is the time when I actually write the content though on the e ink tablet, as that's the closest to the analog experience that I used to get when I was writing in notebooks as I traveled. If I time it right and I get to that moment with the right energy, it's exhilarating. But more on managing your energy and finding flow in another video. The great thing is that the handwritten content on the e-ink tablet can be quickly and accurately digitized and then can be moved forward to the editing process much more quickly. Whereas when I was writing in small notebooks, you'd have to go ahead and type that up afterwards. Today I'm going to share with you the Evaluate Everything Writers Workspace, which is just a small part of what is growing to become the Evaluate Everything Productivity System. Maybe I need an acronym for that. The EEPS. How about that? Anyway, that's exciting because in these templates, I'm finally bringing together something that I've been thinking about and working on all year. I also rely on many different apps to keep track of my writing as well. And these apps need to work across many devices. And I'm gonna talk through how I use Otter, Google Docs, and Microsoft Word. But central to the whole Evaluate Everything productivity system is the app Xtiles. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. And don't worry, you don't need to make any notes or write anything down as you go through this video, because I'm sharing with you my Xtiles template, which is gonna guide you through each step in this process. And in that is any and all of the details that you need to know to make proper use of this and apply it to your own writing. So you see, it might be a script or an article from my website or a chapter in a book that I'm writing. But inevitably, it turns into more like a work web than a workflow. And I need to keep track of my incident to ideas as well as my progress through projects at any time and on any device and xtiles is the tool that i use to do that ideas always begin in xtiles usually in quick notes and usually from my phone they might sit there for some time but they're always available in the top of the browser or from the app on my phone or an app on any tablet i can import this idea directly from my quick notes here and turn it into a sub page and then within that i can even access templates in here so if that idea is past evaluation then i can move that down into the research stage and this is where a large green e ink tablet comes in handy. Trust me, you owe it to yourself to be purposeful here and actually take yourself away from your desk, take yourself away from notifications, get a drink and grab your e ink tablet and do that reading somewhere comfortable. As you know, I'm a big fan of books devices because I can browse the internet in Chrome and transfer links and notes directly into X tiles. I can add links and screen captures, images or quotes. And it's just as easy on any Android tablet or laptop PC. So the idea of this template is that you move your writing down through these stages. So even if you leave this bit of writing for a long time, you'll know instantly where to pick it up. Each of the stages has a little task list to the side as well. So you can put actually any tasks you need to do, but I've given you some ideas of the types of things that you might do each stage and a little bit of explanation of what each stage entails as well. A really important stage to consider is who you're writing for. And it's said that many poor writers spend too little time thinking about who they're actually writing for and they write too generally and they end up not being interesting or important to anyone. When you read you'll notice a few times when somebody actually captures exactly your thoughts or your needs or better yet your emotions and this is no coincidence. The writers have actually had your thoughts, needs and emotions in mind as they write. And this is one of the main things that I'm starting to improve as I develop in my own skills as a content creator. And so I try to force myself to spend more time thinking about the audience before I really start writing. This is a stage where I might not write a great deal and I will think about the psychographics more than probably even the demographics of the people I'm writing for. So how do these people actually think and feel and what are their problems that they might need to overcome? Like for instance, 
getting past writer's block and coherently managing your way through writing projects with a good structure. Over this year, I've definitely developed a better picture in my mind of who my ideal audience are and what they care about and what their struggles are. And that's why your comments and your engagement in my channel is so useful in helping me shape the content. So thanks very much for that. The next place that I develop the writing depends on a few things. More often than not, my ideas come out quite piecemeal. I'll have a thought of a good way of making a point when I'm in the shower or when I'm doing the washing up. In these cases, I might make quick notes and then drag them into the page that I'm working in, or I'll open up that sub page and directly write into one of the tiles in there. If the inspiration comes when I'm driving, then I actually use an app called Otter, which is an AI voice recognition app. It's really meant for meetings, but I like it for recording myself because you can just turn it on and it starts transcribing until you tell it to stop. You don't need to keep pressing the microphone button or saying new line or period like you do with a Gboard recorder. It helps me to think about my writing in two broad categories, either copy or content. Copy is writing to persuade or influence. Like, I'll write a video intro in order to convince you it's worth watching the whole video. Content is writing to educate or inspire. And naturally, that's the majority of my content. Usually, I'll write the copy first, but it just happens in whatever order it happens, to be honest. If the content that I'm writing is intended to be spoken aloud, it's useful to develop these ideas out loud, either into Otter AI voice recognition on my phone, or with the book's voice recognition on an ink tablet. And I can do that straight into X tiles on a book's tablet. And this is good if you're writing a script or if you're planning a presentation. It's just gonna sound more naturally if you actually wrote it the way that you speak it. Using voice recognition then is not only a really rapid way and convenient way to capture ideas and get them into type text, but it also means that you capture ideas in a tone which sounds more natural and in your own speaking voice. If the writing is formal though, then at this stage I'll generally type and develop ideas directly into X tiles. Typing sort of slows you down and you compose your sentences more concisely and purposefully for reading. Thirdly, and unfortunately for me, this is the least often, if I am looking to write something beautiful like a poem or a prose story, I'll reach for the super note and I'll use the background handwriting recognition and enjoy the feel of the pen dragging across the screen. And then I'll get all my handwriting turned into type text, import that into X tiles, or into Google Docs and I'll do the editing there. It's a pleasurable way to write, but in fact, that's the slowest way to write. You can do this on other ink tablets as well, but the Supernote is my favorite for writing longhand. Then where that text goes next depends on what it's going to be used for eventually either into Google Docs if I want to edit that into a final script, which is then easily imported into PromptSmart, which is my teleprompting app. Or I'll use Google Docs still if it's intended to become a web page or other social post, but I'll import it into Word if I'm intending the document to eventually become a print document or a PDF. This is an important stage to really take your time. One of the things about great writing is great editing. I'm firmly of the belief that the more I think about the minute detail of what I write, the better the quality of my copy and my content. I read a lot about writing. I'm learning how to improve my writing all the time. And something that's always stuck with me is about Flaubert and how he agonized over every sentence. And sure, there's a balance to be struck between perfectionism and proliferation of writing. There's a balance between Flaubert and Zola, basically. But you need to develop a sense for editing your work. Take more time for the things that have greater permanence but don't just chuck anything out there. The first draft is never the best draft it could be. And your words represent you for a long time after you type them. So yes, take longer over a print book than you will over a web page, but remember that web page could be up for a long time as well and potentially be accessed by far many more people than a printed book. The writing templates that I'm developing and using in x are becoming incredibly useful for evaluating my words at a really granular level. I can move a block of writing through a set and thoughtful process. And as I repeat that process, I get better at it. And this template will help you get a head start in whatever you need to write this week. So give it a go, there's a link in the description. But self-editing will only get you so far and there's a point at which you need to get a second opinion. And that's where a couple of my books are at right now. So if you do have any skills in editing, please do reach out and let me know as I'm in need of an editor. The final stage is simply to publish. Simply to publish. I do always keep my grammar and my spelling tidy as I write, but of course there are a couple of proofreads to make and especially if it's going into print. I'm a real stickler for properly formatted documents. So before I published my first book, I spent the time to learn all about what is needed in that particular print document. This step of publishing can take time, but it's worth getting these things right. Things like formatting can seem far less important than your actual writing, 
but when they're wrong, they can form barriers and they stop people actually getting through to the deeper details of your work. And don't forget, once you have published, looking after your writing doesn't stop there. You need to launch that and you need to promote it and you need to keep promoting it. So all of these steps in this video I've captured for you in this template, which you can access and you can start using right away for free. There's a link in the description to that. And this process of making a template is one of the most powerful features of Xtiles. It's allowed me to formulate my thoughts so that successful pieces of content that I make can become repeatable. Last year I was using Trello, which is a simple Kanban board. When earlier this academic year Xtiles approached me to try their app, I graduated into Xtiles. Immediately, I liked that I could do everything I could do in Trello, but that the form was a lot more free. What Xtiles allowed me to do is to be more purposeful and more strategic about planning my content. And the more I do this, the more it develops into concrete ideas. And I'm delighted that they challenged me to share these ideas with my audience. And you can see that what we do here on YouTube looks pretty raw and unscripted, but actually most of what I say, now at least, is not off the cuff. I write it to sound quite unscripted, and I write it to sound like the way that I talk, rather than the way that I write. And there are little bits where I'm not really sure what I'm saying, and that's because I've gone off script. And the thing about being creative and coming up with ideas, and which is a massively important thing for professionals to do, is that you need to be able to capture those thoughts at any moment. And if that's driving the car, if that's going for your morning walk, or if that's whilst you're doing the washing up. Every video you've seen in the last six months has at some point gone through Xtiles. Most of them have started as an idea captured in Quick Notes. They've been imported into a writing template like this one, either as a sub page, a linked page, or a block of text, or just a tile. And then they've gone through a process very much like this into the final product, the videos that you see. I've talked today about scripts and book chapters and website pages, but it might be letters, it might be emails, it might be articles, it might be as short as a tweet, or as long as a dissertation, it might be reports, Reports. It might be lessons, it might be webinars, it could be anything that you have to create as a professional to capture your ideas and then to put them into action. So if that sounds useful to you, go ahead and give this template a go from the link in the description.